Hello guys, in this in today's tutorial we're going to make our player be able to slide on the walls. So for that of course we need a wall. So I'm going to copy this and put it here. And I'll add a new component to the player. So click on the player, go on to add components, wall, slide. And I'll we'll actually also be using the wall jump script because it's very similar. So I'll open here the wall jump script and the wall slide script as well there you go and now we're going to show to check if the player is near to a wall just like in the wall jump script where so uh, just to show that we just add the, the wall jump to the player as you can see in the wall jump script you have this line which basically if it is touching something it means that the player is close to a wall and then you can use it to, to a wall jump and we're going to do something very very similar so I'm going to copy the update function and the, the variables and I'll, I'll explain to you while I delete it so basically what we got here is the distance which is the distance of this line and of course we want it to be, this, to be the same as the distance from the wall jump so if this was this looks like it's good at 4.0, uh, 0 0.4. We can also make this 0.4. So I'll put here 0.4 float. This is a reference for the player component script, meaning this script, where we actually move the player up and down. This is the speed which we actually won't be needing, nor this. This, of course, we have to set a reference for the movement script, so this just finds the script on the player and assigns it. Now, here on the update function, first this line over here is making it so that the the physics 2D don't, don't uh, start in the colliders, meaning uh, this ray, to check if this is near a wall, this ray would collide with the with the collider itself of the player and we don't want that, we don't want that to happen so we we'll put that line here so that when this line crosses uh, checks and sees that it's inside the player it won't do nothing this here is a raycast which is the line itself it starts from the position of the player and it goes to whatever the, the direction the player is facing and has this distance which we set over here and returns it to a hit, and what a hit is, is basically the, a recast hit to D, which holds the information of what it did collide with, the normal that it had, and whatnot, stuff like that. Here, now this part is the part that we're going to change. Now we don't need the player to be pressing W for it to all slide, of course. For the player to all slide, all we need is the player to not be grounded, and to be hitting something, and this is exactly what this does. It's not grounded, and if the collider is not null, meaning if there is a collider, then the player is near something, and it will do something here. And what will that something do? Well, that something, for instance, can be just uh, like a cap, like a, a cap on the speed, because there's several types of uh, wall slides in games. One of them is whenever you are close to a wall and you stay there, your jump while you are going down it's slower so we're going to make that all we have to do is get component uh, rigid body 2d rigid body 2d dot velocity and want it to be equal to the to a new vector 2 which is equal to 0 and uh, a variable called speed which I stupidly Deleted anyways public float speed. Let's make that minus 3 and here uh, just like that So right now what is happening is whenever our player is close to a wall to a wall This will be its velocity. So um, I'll be showing you that this is not the desired effect If I go to close to a wall, you will see that the player gets immediately Is immediately going down. That's not what he wants. We want this to only uh, slow down the going down effect so all we have to do is make here an if clause here. And we want to check if the velocity of the player, the y velocity, dot y is smaller 
than the speed, and the speed is a negative variable. So when this the velocity of the pair going down is smaller, meaning is more negative than the velocity of the that we specified over here, then this will be done. And now you'll see that when I play this, this this cell is normal, just doing that. But if I reach a certain speed, oh, sometimes it gets stuck. Uh, let me fix that in a quick instance. Okay, so you'll see that the speed going down is now kept. There's maximum going down speed, which is always reached. And of course, if you change this to something slower, the player goes even down slower. So if I put here min minus one, the player will go down even slower, like so. Of course, you can play around with this value to make it whatever you want. Anyways, this is it. Uh, now I'm going to show you the wall slide that there is in other games. And because I want to keep this code in here, I'll just make a here a bool that is public. Public bool uh, only down. And we will be applying this variable here. So when the variable is true, it means that we want to the wall slide to behave like this. When it's not true, we want it to behave some in some other way. So if only down is true, then this if clause will happen, else meaning when only down is not true, something else will happen. And as you can see, you have here uh, nested ifs, so we basically can make them be the same if, because if you don't know, a nested if is the same thing as an end, like that. So I can basically delete this from here to make it the code a little bit cleaner. Anyways, else, well, the other kind of, of uh, wall slide that happens in games is that whenever a player gets close to a wall, Whenever a player gets close to all and jumps, the the motion of the jump is slowed down. So instead of just going, instead of just doing this, if he's close to all, he will go like, Ooh, like slower, as if the player would be grabbing the wall to make its motion go slower. Anyways, inside this, if we want to check. If the player is not on the ground, just like we checked in here, if not grounded, and it's near a wall, so if the collider is not null, then what I want to do is to get component which by 2d and there's a parameter that actually does what I described there which is of course the gravity scale gravity scale and I'm going to put here public float uh, graph scale and set it to be by default 0 0.5 volts and of course make this to be equal to the graph scale there you go. And of course you want this to, to go back to normal if the player is not close to a wall. So just do it like so. And I'm going to put it like this. There you go. Else we want the gravity scale to go back to B1 like it was before. Save. Invalid expression else. Let's see why. Oh, I forgot to... Uh, curly brackets over here and let's see if it's all correct with the, with the curly brackets okay there's one more this is how it's supposed to go and again because there are multiple clauses inside of each other we can actually modify the code but it will stay like this it's not very easy it's not much confusing if it's only down if this happens this happens if it's not only down as you can, as you can see this is on the same line of that if it's not only down, then this will happen. So now I forgot to save. Now this is false. And of course you'll see that if it's true it will work as it as it was before. Nothing is happening, but if I do this only down, if I turn only down to false, 
you'll see that it happens that stuff for the player just gets slower but for some reason the gravity scale is not going back to normal and let's see why is that it's because I forgot to put here one oops my bad and now it will work as intended as you can see the player goes slower up and down just as intended and if he goes he gets away from the wall he gets to his normal gravity again the gravity here in this the gravity scale here you see it changes back to one whenever he's on the ground or out, not near the wall and of course you can combine this with the wall jump to make cool stuff uh, let me just change the speed to 10 or something like that and you can see that this enables some cool stuff and that's basically it that was this tutorial anyways thank you for watching and see you in the next one